Hey, Monica, did you know it's now even easier to listen to Round the Hay Bale podcast? What? Really? How easy? That's right. All you have to do is say, Alexa, play Round the Hay Bale podcast. Playing Round the Hay Bale podcast on Apple Music. Ooh, we're really fancy now. Tune in to Round the Hay Bale every Monday at 9 a.m. Central Time. Grab a cup of joe and let's gather around that hay bale with your hosts, Anne from Andale Homestead, Casey from Ormsby Farms, Monica from Bland's Promised Land Ranch. Here they are. Hey, hey y'all, hey. Hey, y'all, hey. This is Ann from Andale Homestead. I'm Monica from Bland's Promised Land Ranch. Hello, everyone. It's Casey from Ormsby Farms. And welcome back to the holiday version of our podcast. But listen, y'all, if you're listening on a podcast app, but you want to see our ho-ho-ho faces, definitely head over to our YouTube channel. We are live. Well, not live there, but we are live faces um, because we love reading your comments and interacting with y'all in the comment section. It helps us kind of get into the algorithms. Um, and it helps get out to more like-minded people. So go ahead and click on the link tree link, click on the YouTube, head over to Round the Hay Bale YouTube channel, and we're there. Hey. Okay, so today's episode, we are talking about homegrown, homesteading holiday ideas. We're discussing holiday food and decor, things that we make right here on our homesteads, or maybe you make on your homestead. So, okay, so let's talk about some ideas. Let's get some good ideas. And if y'all here in the in the listening world, you hear something that you're like, oh, I have a better idea. Make sure you come check us out on Friday because you want to definitely share that with us because we are going to be interested to hear what you have. If it can tweak something we have said already, or if you have something to add, please, please, please make sure you come share it with us because we're excited to share with you what we've come up with and maybe there's more things. So let's get into it. Homestead, homegrown holiday ideas. So we're talking about decor, food things. Miss Ann, I know you said you had some ideas decor wise. Like I'm trying to think of what I can make decor wise Absolutely. here. I mean, I'm a Dollar Tree girl. I'm going to run out of the Dollar Tree. But yeah. if, if, <laughs> if I need to grab something just from my homestead, I do have pine trees. Yeah. So pine what? needles and pine trees. Okay. So um, what can I do? Well, you can certainly make wreaths out of them. And you don't have to have the foam mold to be able to make your wreath. You can just cut a round circle of cardboard. We all have Amazon boxes at our house, I'm afraid. And so it has to, it needs to be a sturdy cardboard, but you cover that in ribbon or I've covered it with crepe paper or even construction paper before. And that gives you something to glue your pine needles mixed in with pine cones and you have some berries and things like that that can go on. In our town, we have a little historic town here in Edenton. And so there are a lot of churches and organizations and others that are around that get their vines that you can purchase to be able to cover your doors and your thresholds. And that always, and then you sprinkle your little lights in there, which is nice. And we also, oftentimes in colonial times, they made their wreaths with fruit. If you have a lot of fruit on your particular homestead, they would make it with apples and oranges and grapes and lemons and cranberries and all those Ooh, I bet it smelled so good. Absolutely beautiful. And surprisingly, if you don't decorate November 1st, like some bland Promised Land Ranch people that I happen <laughs> to know, it usually lasts right through the holiday season. So that's kind of fun. What about you, Casey? What are you thinking? Well, I, you know, also you could probably use some leftover fencing that you have to get, you know, your... Um, evergreen stuff uh wrapped around and that kind Absolutely. of stuff. 
I think a lot of us all have, you know, the leftover chicken wire that you cut, you know, to make it just right. And it's not enough to necessarily make a fence again, but yep. you can probably wrap it together. I'm trying to find words today, y'all. The words are not really coming to me as easily. Um, that's a ho, ho, ho shame. Um, yeah. But using that to make wreaths or garland or something like that I'm doing this year, we also have a lot of pine little pine seedlings that grow everywhere that you don't want them to grow. Okay. I'm pulling them out and putting them in a pot and decorating them for the chickens. I saw a video oh. that someone pulled the little tiny, maybe a foot tall pine seedling out, potted it. And then on dental floss, they thread dehydrated squash for yellow. It was, uh, was it? Tomatoes, oh, how fun. So you have the dehydrated food and popcorn and then the wrap it around your treat. That way the chickens can peck at it and eat little treats throughout the holiday. So it looks like decorations on a Christmas tree. So I think that is kind of a fun idea uh, for Ooh. your babies, your hens. These are the That's girls cool. that are over in winter in it with you. I love that idea. Okay, so I've been trying to rack my brain thinking of things. And you guys both have me like really going now for these holiday decorating ideas. So I'm not, in the past, I haven't been a super decorator, okay? Usually Eric's got me on lock when it comes to decorating because I'm the type of person that if I see something, I'm like, ooh, and I bring it home and I just want to like slap it on the wall, okay? And if you look behind me, some of these things are not my doing, they're Eric's doing, but some of the other things on the walls are my doing because I'm like, ooh, my kid made it. I should just stick it on the wall. Of course. So, so I'm thinking that Christmas time is a really good time to use what you have, right? So we're looking at homegrown things you've got. What about those pumpkins that, you know, the spare pumpkins that maybe came around in the end of October and you're able to get some for free maybe, or you just had some volunteers, those, maybe some of those, not just pumpkins, but maybe some of those winter squash that are kind of yep. voluntold that they're in, the, they're in the volunteer garden or wherever. If you're not using them for animals and you're not eating them, because some of us like myself, we have a lot of pumpkins and our pumpkins usually last until January because we get a bunch of them from the local, um, pumpkin patch they give them to us right so why not take a few pumpkins and make some snowmen spray paint them decorate yeah. them because we don't do we don't do jack-o-lanterns so why not decorate oh, yeah, them for the right spray paint them with white or let the kids paint them and decorate them um, maybe cut snowflakes out of them i mean we're not getting a lot of snow here in texas so why mm -hmm. not paint them white decorate some snowflakes in the sides and then put lights in there and light up the snowflakes, you know, the snowflake pumpkins. I mean, that might be a really fun thing. And then I'm thinking, well, if you're stringing all that stuff for your babies, why not string little, you know, whether it's popcorn strings for your, you know, Christmas tree, but why not do like the dehydrated fruit and put it up around your house and just enjoy that. Yes. And you don't want to eat it when you're done because if you live on a homestead or a farm, it gets a little dusty up in here. So I don't think I'd be eating it later, but, but you can use it for a simmer pot. I mean, mm -hmm. it's easy to take some old dehydrated fruit that you may not want to eat or put in your fire cider or wherever else throw it in a pot of water, put it on your stovetop, your wood stove or whatever, and let it simmer with some cinnamon and some scents. And it's going to be that homemade, fresh scented, like, you know, like almost like a potpourri, but it's not going to be all those. Yeah. It's not going to be all those chemicals though, that are stuck in all the other stuff. Like, you know, exactly. your Febreze and all your other stuff. Yeah. It, you know, that the simmer pots have gotten very popular on social media right now. Cause I think people are, I'm not wanting the stuff that has so much chemicals in it. I mean, simmer pots are so easy. It's water and you throw some dehydrated fruit or cinnamon sticks in yeah. that water and you just let it slowly simmer all day and yeah. it makes your house smell amazing and yeah. like a big old Christmas hug. And it's cleaner for you. It's better for you than, than all those forever chemicals that people that we know. Yeah, I'm coming for you, Eric and Susan. People that want to <laughs> use all the all, all the all the forever chemicals that they want to yes. keep in their clothing and in their house. It's yeah. going to be cleaner and better for you. We're going to try to right. slowly change our family members to want to use the more natural things. <laughs> Just right. ease them right into that chemical free stuff, right? There you go. So yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. I didn't. I mean, that's an awesome idea with your pine little pine pine trees. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. There and was I can't take it. I, I know that it was it was another YouTuber that did it. I won't take full credit. I'll take half credit. 
I love it. <laughs> well, there was a competition, I think, last year of who decorated their Christmas their chicken coop the cutest for Christmas. Oh, I just think man. that's just the cutest thing. Is, is this Ann Dale challenging me and Monica to a chicken coop decorating? Well, I never got pop? around to it. I can tell yeah. you, it was a lot of fun to see. Oh, and that's so cute. If you are someone that likes to put outside lights up and have decorations and something, I mean, something that wouldn't hurt them, you have it on the outside of the mm -hmm. coop, yeah. not like your treat tree that you would put inside. Right. But I thought that was an adorable idea as well. Decorate a great idea. That's and there's a good. lot of the battery operated like uh Christmas lights now. Yeah. Um, I know I have some in my Amazon storefront because I tried them out last year on my house and they weren't as bright as I liked, but they'd be wonderful for uh, Absolutely. a chicken coop while you're yeah. sitting out there with some hot cocoa while the babies are in the yard. Having yeah. Christmas lights, I think it'd be wonderful. Oh, but, that's cool. Yeah. I have some solar lights th just like that. And oh. it doesn't come on until dark, but it goes off at light. So, I mean, I've got them on bushes. I, Can I y'all tell our it. chickens are spoiled here by listening to us? Just a little bit. Mine don't have anything special. I'm just, they're just happy that they get food and water each day. I'm like reminding the kids at three o'clock in the afternoon, do y'all water and feed the chickens? They're like, yeah, they're free range, mom. They eat bugs. And I'm like, yep, still got to, still got to throw food out for them, guys. Still yeah, just a little bit. Just a little, a little bit. bit. But yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So when you're talking about homegrown, if you're, if you're at a point where, um, we're not talking about last minute things necessarily, cause that's going to be a whole nother episode. But if we're looking at like homegrown things, decor, but even like food stuff, if we're looking at food things, cause we're starting to think about gifting and gift items, things that we need around our house during this time of year. One of the things we talked about, whether it's a gift for someone else or whether it's just for you is like fire cider and making some of those things for your family. So mm -hmm. if you have those things in your garden, bring them in, start taking care of preserving them and throw them in a big batch of fire cider. That's a, you know, a homegrown type of holiday Absolutely. thing, right? Absolutely. And having those things now, starting now before it gets too late in the season is always best. And I'm not sure exactly when this episode comes out, but it's always time. Like it's never too late to start right. some of those homegrown remedies and medicinals okay. for yourself and for your family. So if you haven't right. started fire cider by now, here's your sign. Start it. If you haven't started with your honey and your garlic or your honey and your onions cough syrup, yep. do it now. Because everybody's growing onions and garlic. People are trying to, they have it from last year, things that you want to use up. If you've brought in those hot peppers, or if you've got those cayennes dehydrated, you can throw them in your fire cider batch, right? I mean, That's right. there's always stuff that you've grown on your farm that you can use for yourself during the holidays, food wise, you know, um, exactly right. and you can do that. And now speaking of food, if you're entertaining, there are so many holiday ideas that we can do. Casey is one of the best bread makers that I've ever known and then pies and things like that as far as his bread. But you can mold it and shape it in various styles to look holiday-ish or even maybe have a decoration on the top of your bread loaf. One thing that I particularly enjoy is making a candy cane crescent roll pastry. And it's so easy. You lay out the crescent rolls and it's bottom of the triangle to bottom of the triangle. Line it with a little bit of jelly. You can make it, curve it into a jam, uh, curve it into a candy cane. Flap those pointed edges over the top. Tuck it under a little bit, stick it in the oven, and in 10 minutes, you have the cutest, tastiest pastry oh, that looks like a so holiday. Cute. Yeah, it's really neat to be able to do that. And I have done some fruit in fruit trays and veggie trays in shapes of Christmas trees or wreaths. How about you, Casey? Have you made some of your food to look like something else other than just the food? Oh. Well, you know I have. It's uh, I always have to say, hello, I'm Casey. I have holiday decoration problems um, because I have an addiction to buying decor. 
and I have an addiction on watching Instagram reels and getting all these little cutesy wootsy yeah. uh, holiday ways of doing things. Um, there was one that I just watched that was adding um, into your, like you have the little small that you can make cocoa bombs in. Okay. So I did cocoa bombs last year, but they do it with ice and they put like the Ooh. blue where the red or the green sprinkles inside of the ice. So it cool. freezes inside. So it looks like a snow globe that you can put in your kids' water or whatever you're putting the ice in. How uh, fun. But I love um, holiday drink ideas. I, you know, I have a lot of pears on my homestead and I make a pear cider um, that is really nice that you can, it's, it's non-alcoholic, but you can add your adult beverage to it if you so choose. Um, I've also done, it's a newer one because my video will already be out, but I made sh not necessarily shelf stable eggnog, but eggnog with shelf stable stuff. Because oh. on our homestead, eggnog is kind of like a tradition. It was cool. started by my grandfather. He loved him some eggnog. And he used to get the Evan Williams one that was already pre-made. So kind of like cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater kind of eggnog. But That's this right. making homemade eggnog, I think it tastes better. And then to know that it's stuff from your homestead, like yeah. your eggs from your chickens, I think it just, it, the taste is it's just completely different. And knowing that you got like pork from a friend and made sausage balls. I think I got Monica addicted to my sausage ball recipe. Um, and my, I, my so, kids and family love them. Yeah, they're, they're so easy. Have you ever done sausage balls, Andale? I have. I have not with um, like homegrown pork, but we have done sausage rolls before. I prefer the cheese balls rather than the sausage Ooh, because yes. I really enjoy those. Those cheese balls are yummy and eat them forever. Okay. But here's the thing. Casey was like, this is super easy. It's like literally just a few ingredients, right? I think it's like three ingredients, right? Casey, it's like three. cheese, mm -hmm. sausage, and bisquick mix. Well, mm -hmm. here's the thing. I made my own bisquick mix. So I had it like in a container and I was like, I could just use this homemade biscuit mix. This is so easy. So I took a scoop of that. Well, I started backing off on some of the biscuit mix, our biscuit, you know, the homemade biscuit mix. And I added a little more cheddar and they're like so cheesy and so sausagey. And they're like, oh little tiny balls. and we throw them in the air fryer and oh. they're so easy and so fast. What? And oh my gosh, they're so amazing. And I'll take them and I will just barely cook them. And then I freeze them. I actually flash freeze them, Casey. You'd be so proud of me. I don't flash See, freeze I'm you, I, I've rubbed off on her, Miss Ann. Yeah. I've, I've that's awesome. Off. I don't flash freeze anything because I don't have the time for that mess. That's like so, like that's a long process for me, but I do it and I will stick them in my freezer. And then Eric will, like, especially during the busiest time, like in the fall and winter, when he's outside working or doing something in the house and he's busy, busy, he'll come in and be like, what's for dinner? And I'm like, you know what? I have some sausage balls in there. Do you want some of that? He's like, yes. Yeah. And eat it with like a sweet and sour dipping sauce. Mm -hmm. He loves it. He could literally eat like just a bowl of sausage balls for dinner because it's easy. And I just pull them out of the freezer, throw them in my air fryer for like 10 minutes and yep. boom, done. My kids love it. So we just make a big batch of sausage balls all at once and we freeze whatever we don't eat that night. Well, I think, that, I think that's also kind of ties into kind of what we're discussing for homestead, homegrown kind of holiday things yeah. is preparing for those times when family is over or you right. have church friends over or something. Yeah. I always pre-make appetizers because it's the easiest thing for me to pull out, yeah. throw in the air fryer so I can still be a good host and I'm still socializing with my guests and not slaving over a hot yeah. stove making it. I do that with my sausage balls. I make homemade cheese sticks. I make homemade um, like wontons and all of them are flash frozen, which just means yeah. you put them in the freezer, not touching on a cookie sheet for 24 hours. Then you can throw them in a gallon bag. And right. if you want, if you're, you're like Mr. Eric Bland and say, Hey, I'm just going to grab five sausage balls. You can, because they're not yeah. stuck together. They're already done. And right. it's, it's easy. I, th I think having, I've done with the crescent rolls. Your crescent roll recipe reminded me 
um, I call them pigs in the blanket. I don't know what other yep, people those, call them. That's what we call them too. <laughs> the little uh, hot dogs wrapped in the pigs in the blanket. Flash freezing. Hi, I'm Casey. I have a flash freezing problem. Wait, do you yeah. cook them? Do you like? Do you cook the the rolls? Like, nope. Everything usually is raw for me. Wait, and, you yeah. take raw crescent roll. Mm -hmm. You put your little mini dog in there, or you cut your mm -hmm. hot dogs, or whatever you're doing. You wrap it, and you just mm -hmm. flash freeze it like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you pull it out, and you put it in the oven or the air fryer, and it works. And it works. It still gets fluffy though. Like it's like bloop, and it gets fluffy. Um, see, I cut my crescent rolls like the one triangle can turn into like four triangles for me, so yeah. they fluff up a little bit, um, but they still taste just the same. I mean, to me, I, I do 400 for 10 minutes on what? most of most of my appetizers are 400 two minutes. Another one is with the old, I cut squash and zucchini from the summer into rounds like coin size, yes, and to prep appetizers, I will dip them in the flour, the egg, and then like a breadcrumb recipe, and then flash freeze that. And then you can pull that out when you have holiday guests. And oh my goodness. 410 minutes, and they're like a crispy uh, fried zucchini chip kind of thing. Oh, yeah. it sounds delicious. They actually get crispy too. Like they're, that's for real. Now, I, I'll tell you, I do a little spray spray. Now, I bought a sprayer that you can put your olive oil or avocado mm -hmm. oil, whatever healthy oil you want in there. Yeah. Now, not lard or any of that because it has to be something that stays liquid. And I spray it over there on top of it um, before I put it in and it will crisp up. <gasps> mm -hmm. What? That's so cool. You're so fancy. See, my idea of appetizer for the holidays is I crack open a thing of pepper jelly that I canned earlier <laughs> in the season. I throw it over a block of cream cheese that I just remembered to take out of the fridge about 30 minutes before I needed it, thankfully. And, oh, I, just, good, though. The, the, and then I just throw a bunch of Ritz crackers on the side. And I'm like, boom. Have there at you it. go, baby. There you go. That's, that's my idea. Okay, <laughs> Monica Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> but what? I mean, honestly, flash freezing is not difficult. And mm -hmm. it's it's just a matter, like Casey had said, just to set time. some parchment paper or even wax paper on a baking tray is what, how yeah. we do it. Put mm -hmm. it on a baking tray, lay everything out so it's not touching and stick it in the freezer. And oftentimes it's because I don't have time to either dehydrate it or cook it or freeze it or what any of those other things I don't have time to deal with it all at one time yeah and so the next day open up a ziploc bag pour them bad boys in there and throw it back in the freezer it's just so much easier for yeah. me uh -huh. I'm make I'm gonna flash freeze these pigs in a blanket I mean like I'm yeah. literally I am gonna be trying to do this like soon because that is our thing we have a really big Christmas, uh, uh, we have a really big New Year's party and we always mm -hmm. have mozzarella sticks and mini egg rolls and we always have pigs in a blanket and chicken nuggets and we just make all these little side dishes for anybody that wants to snack and kids and then we have some big like pots of like chili and then I make some like chicken and things like that. We have all these different foods that are meals, but we have a lot of snacky appetizers right. and it takes forever and it costs so much more to buy it, but also to just sit there. I will stand there and I'll be wrapping pigs in a blanket and making my kids help me yeah like their whole first half of the party right right that's and that fun. is something we do want to consider that you can make it ahead of time so that no you clue. can actually be a part of your party which is and not that's the biggest thing is that you want to during the holiday season it's about you know family and your you know friends and the experiences that you're experiencing with them and taking that one thing off of your your plate per se. Yeah, um, that's right. It just makes it so much easier and it makes the holidays a lot more enjoyable <laughs> when yeah. you're the only one in the kitchen doing ninety things while yes. everybody else is enjoying the party, kind of thing. Well, usually I make my kids like kind of help them and help, and they usually volunteer. They usually ask. I don't make them. They usually come in and say, "How can I help?" Um, but and usually, you know, it's people in and out. But it's so much nicer to know that it's just like 
in a container ready to go. Cause the other, other stuff, a lot of the other stuff is already prepackaged, but right. I'm actually going to do a bunch of sausage balls this year, but see for the quantity you need for a party, it would take time, really time to prep. So that's right. where I have to like get my life together right now ahead of the time yeah. and pl plan. But man, that's a really good idea. I'm telling you, um, you know, we always talk about like August, September is canning season, right? That's what everybody calls the canning season time. We're shooting this for those that are tuning in. We're shooting this in October. So this comes out in December, but we're shooting in October. This is the time that I call it my appetizer prep time, my flash right. freeze time. And instead of canning every day, I usually have two to three appetizer recipes that I get done, flash freeze, put it in a bag for November and December and January. Wow. Um, but even if they're listening in December, if you know that you have something coming in a week yeah, or a few days, you can certainly pre-make those. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, for real. But you're also going to save money too. I mean, if you think about it, because, you know, I'm, I'm I'll be honest with you, costs go up <laughs> each month. Yes. My Walmart bill, my grocery bill is going up. So if you are even just planning now for a party or an event or something that's coming up in three or four weeks, you're going to be saving money because right. also when the holidays come, I feel like the prices really do get jacked up in certain places. They I do. mean, we have yeah. sales certain times a year, but Mm -hmm. Like, that's the thing. If you can catch a sale now, then grab, you know, people, a lot of people mm -hmm. after the holidays, after Thanksgiving, they'll grab turkeys on sale. You know, my mother-in-law, we literally raise our own turkeys. We raise our own turkeys. But this woman, bless her heart. I just love her so much. She'll call me up the day, like three mm -hmm. days after, after holidays. And she's like, Hey, are we going to have enough turkeys for next year? Because these turkeys are down to like 10 cents a pound. Yeah. They're, nine, they're nine cents a pound. And I'm like, I mean, they're on clearance. So yes. obviously you should buy them. It's right. Like, That's right. Buy turkeys. And I'm like, we have like 15 turkeys walking around outside. And this woman is in the Walmart buying yep. nine cents a pound turkey breast. We do that every year. We go and it's usually right before Thanksgiving in yeah. our area. But we do that. And then we end up canning the turkey. So yeah. um mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, catch the sales when you can because you may not catch that same sale at the you know, right in the midst of the holidays when you really need it the most. I okay. think that's important too. And you know, the canning season, if you start thinking about what you want for the holidays, we, we can't, we actually processed a few turkeys in the summer and Eric was like, Hey, do you want me to smoke these? And I was like, actually, yes. I yeah. ran out of my smoked turkey broth that I use every Christmas, every Thanksgiving. I use my smoked turkey broth for the gravy and stuff. I'm going to need you to smoke this so that I can take those bones and make some more stock Wonderful. because I don't have the stock because you don't have stock that you're accumulating when you smoke your turkey. Right. It just doesn't really accumulate. So by making that broth in advance, I am setting myself up for success on yeah. Christmas day when I'm scrounging to find turkey stock because I used all of it through the year. So I will say that's been really helpful for me to make some of those homegrown meals and some of those quality things if you kind of plan ahead and i'm not always a <laughs> and speaking of speaking of sales I, I i i don't know if i'm correct on the exactly but this episode i think comes out the monday before thanksgiving the day after thanksgiving i'm telling you that's when they're trying to get rid of all of the quote unquote thanksgiving style food like the turkeys like cranberries Right. That is the time that you want to go out if you don't raise it yourself and say, okay, this is this is the way that I can save money. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of the times I've noticed like the Pillsbury biscuits and crescent rolls mm -hmm. are they buy so many of them thinking that they'll go in Thanksgiving that sometimes you can get a BOGO or a okay. two dollar yeah. off of that after Thanksgiving, the Friday after, or sometimes the Saturday. So Check those uh -huh. out because that's a good I'll way to pay a little more attention to those sales. Yeah. Well, the cranberries, I know they're always trying to get rid of those cranberries. If they, if they didn't understock the cranberries and then you can't find any, then you'll have all this overstock and cranberries will be on clearance. And it's mm -hmm. been years now. My mother-in-law's like, I have cranberries. They're on sale. Go get them. You know, so she'll go grab them. And then I've had cranberries sit in my freezer for years. And I'm like, what do I do with these things? Cause I only need them like once a year. Well, I was just looking online earlier for recipes and you can make, what's called Christmas jam. 
Woohoo. And now this has been my like oh. year of this has been my year of jam. Like I've been jamming everything this year because I had no garden, like Yay. zero garden. Monica's jamming, jamming. I, I've been jamming it up this whole year. So I'm like, well, if I have no garden, because I still don't have a fall garden because I failed at that. So I'm just going to be okay. successful in, in prepping inside and doing those things. I'm not going to mm -hmm. be not going to be salty about it. So I'm going to get those cranberries this year and I'm going to make Christmas jam, cranberries, strawberries, some sugar, pectin, and some spices. Like, there you go. How amazing yeah. is that? That's I'm awesome. Cranberry juice too. I, I yeah. know that a lot of people will can even the frozen cranberries and they'll put like a half a cup in a, a pint, I think it is, or yeah. maybe it's a quart and fill it up with water. And then once you can it, it, boils the cranberries into making Ooh. the juice so then you have you know home canned cranberry juice that's that hot. sounds lovely and looks like holiday food so that's exactly. great that sounds great so we're getting ready to close out here because we are on on time limits on our podcast of today but i just want to say thank you to everyone for being able to be here today we appreciate you don't forget to come around to round the hay bale through the link tree link that you see the barcode that's up there in the corner yes and that way you can find all of our channels from bland's promised land ranch ormsby farms and andale homestead so thank you so much for being here everyone we really appreciate you and we'll see you on the next one bye y'all bye, bye y'all happy holidays bye.